This week on Theme Park Worldwide, the show, we bring to you a full review of the brand new Zamperla Air Race at Drayton Manor, take a detailed look at both Ratatouille at Disneyland Paris and Diagon Alley at Universal Orlando Resort, and ask the question, would you stay on a roller coaster for five days? That's all coming up in this week's episode of Theme Park Worldwide, the show. My name's Sean Sandbrook, this is Theme Park Worldwide, and that means it's time to cue those titles. Once again, a very warm welcome to the latest episode of the show, here from the wonderful world of theme parks. Now before we kick straight in uh, with the show this week, I just want to mention that the next episode of Theme Park Worldwide, the show, will be in two weeks' time. That will be on July the 15th, that's Tuesday, July the 15th, uh, where we're going to be broadcasting it from Disneyland Paris. Obviously we're going there next week, we're going to be doing loads and loads of filming, so there'll be lots of stuff coming up on the channel over the next few weeks relating to Disneyland Paris. And of course the next show will be uh, in two weeks time where we're going to be bringing it uh, from the Ratatouille area which is going to be absolutely fantastic. But anyway, yeah, that's a little bit on our future show. Obviously there isn't going to be one next week as we're going to be travelling there uh, and obviously get into grips with all the Disney stuff which is going to be awesome. Um, but yeah, anyway, enough about that. Let's kick straight in with our UK theme park news. So yes, first up in our UK theme park news, we're going to talk to you a little bit about roller coasters and how long would you stay on them for. Well, friend of theme park worldwide, the show Mark Lewis, is about to spend five days on a roller coaster. Yes, it's going to be 40 hours he's going to spend on it, spread over five days, uh, on Megaphobia at Oakwood. Uh, now, if you're not sure on the ride, there's a picture of it. Uh, and that beauty there is a CCI wooden coaster. Uh, also, Custom Coasters International, for you, the non-geeky people out there. Um, but yeah, he's going to be spending 40 hours on this ride um, this summer, all in the aid of charity, of course. Um, so, Mark has actually ridden this ride 3,500 times at least, which is a lot of times to ride a roller coaster. Of course, I would say I've ridden that on Nemesis, maybe even more over the years. Uh, but this is a wooden coaster, it's not like your steel coasters that are quite smooth. This is quite a jolty woody. Um, but the fact he's done this is amazing. Um, but yeah, he did this challenge back in 1996 when the ride opened. Uh, he spent some time on it. But this time he's doing it for charity and it's going to be absolutely awesome. We're supporting him 100% of the way here on the show because it sounds absolutely awesome. Uh, now, uh, Megaphobia was actually rated uh, in the top 25 wooden roller coasters in the world. Uh, however, more obviously wooden rides have been built over recent years. So it's now in the top 50. But it's still an amazing ride. If you've not been out there, it's quite a small park, Oakwood. Go and check it out. We've got some videos on the channel going to be coming up this year from it as well, uh, as we're heading there in August. Um, but yes, he's doing this for Great Ormond Street Hospital Children's Charity uh, for this amazing course. I want all of you guys, even if it's just a pound, uh, obviously this show gets probably about 1,500 views over the week. If all of you just gave a pound to Mark for this, it'd be amazing. Think, guys, you know, uh, he's spending 40 hours on a rough roller coaster. So, yeah, do all you can. I'm going to put a link in the description down below, which will take you straight to it. Uh, and both myself and Mark want to thank anyone who is going to donate for him. An amazing course, Great Ormond Street Children's Hospital. Uh, and, of course, he's going to be riding Megaphobia, which is one of the best wooden roller coasters I've ever ridden. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, that's Mark Lewis. What a challenge. I mean, I might look at doing something like that myself, actually, in a few years, especially for such a brilliant cause. And, yeah, I think it's a really good thing to do. Anyway, we've been on it. After talking about it for ages, Air Race, the uh, the Zampolo attraction at Drayton Manor, um, it's been running actually for the past couple of weeks um, with riders on, normally open around 12 in the afternoon uh, for a few hours. Um, but yeah, ahead of its official opening next Saturday, I've been on Air Race. Now, Air Race at Drayton Manor, it was going to be one of them things. It was either going to just look good off ride and you get on it and it might not be that good, or you're going to get on it and it was going to blow you away. That's what it did to me. Uh, but I do think it, you could class it as a family ride. It's not amazingly thrilling. Um, it does go quite slow as it spins upside down. But it offers some fantastic hang time. 
I mean, as you're coming round, as the ride's starting, it holds you upside down for three, four seconds. And when it's stopping, maybe five, six seconds, you're suspended upside down. So it gives you a very good lot of hang time, good feeling. The restraints are quite loose on that as well, which is good. And um, they're not pushed down too hard. So that's very good for getting some hang time on it. Um, but yeah, it's a very, very good ride. I'd give it 8 out of 10 um, for Thrill. Family, I'd give it 9 out of 10. I think it's a fantastic attraction, obviously. Uh, it's suitable for families to go on. I mean, it's got four riders per aircraft. Uh, and it's just a very, very good ride. Obviously, the vamps are opening it officially this Saturday on the 5th of July. Um, so after that, it will be guaranteed to be open every day. So head down to Drayton Manor in Tamworth. Check out this ride. It's very, very good. Um, I just want to say a big thank you to all the operations team at Drayton Manor. I was one of the first people to ever ride it, just after it had been built, actually. And um, what an amazing ride it actually is for the park. It's great to see a thrill ride in there at Drayton Manor. We've not had one uh, for a while. But yes, thank you very much for arranging that. Uh, and keep an eye out with Drayton Manor, actually, because we're going to be uh, doing a few more things with Drayton Manor over this year, which is going to be absolutely awesome. But yes... That is all for our UK theme park news. Remember, go and check out Aeros at Drayton Manor. And also, check out Mark Lewis as he's doing this amazing marathon on Megaphobia. Let's have some worldwide theme park news, shall we? So also opening next week is a fantastic new development, probably one of the best themed experiences at any theme park in the world, if not the universe. That's if they have theme parks in other worlds, we don't know. But yeah, um, this is it. This is Diagon Alley at Universal Orlando Resort. We've been waiting for this ever since the original uh, Harry Potter opened uh, with Forbidden Journey and stuff. We knew there was going to be a second part. And I would say now, take a wild guess, there'll probably be a third part in a few years as well. I mean... You know, this is a massive IP, a massive brand, uh, and it's working amazing for Universal. They're really taking on Disney with this one. Uh, I mean, we're going to have a little look now at the completed product. Obviously, there have not really been too many soft openings for it. It's been quite low profile, but there's been quite a few people who have ridden it um, over there. And I've read some reviews. Obviously, I'll be riding it in September and doing my own review. Um, but wow, it looks like an amazing ride. Let's have a little look then. So there you got a picture of the waterfront, which is the area on the main sort of... Uh, river in the Universal uh, that's in the Universal studio side so just again to mention if you usually don't know um, Islands of Adventure which is the theme park next door is home to the current Harry Potter area and then obviously the building Diagon Alley in Universal Studios and then you've got the link which is the Hogwarts Express so that there's the waterfront King's Cross Station there where you've got the uh, Hogwarts Express uh, you've got a tube station couple of shops London buildings there which is cool then you've got the night bus, which is there as well. Again, a closer up bit of detail in the background there of the buildings, how immersive these actually look. I mean, a lot of people have said it's sort of too real, if you know what I mean. It's it's like you're in London, apparently. So I can't wait. I've been to London loads, so I can't wait to go there and just see how real this actually is going to feel. Is it too much? I don't know. Comment below if you think it's too much. I've heard some people say, you know, uh, it's too immersive. So how things can be too immersive, personally, I don't know, because I love immersion but yeah that looks great and it's obviously muggle london looks brilliant Diagon Alley, there you go that isn't concept art that is a real photo of the actual thing look at that there you got the gringotts coaster entrance which is just down the bottom here and then obviously you got the dragon on the top there which breathes fire look at that absolutely awesome i mean i don't know how often it does it um, well that looks absolutely awesome and it's that sort of the main stretch of Diagon Alley. Uh, and obviously the entrance to the Gringotts Coaster, which we still don't know a lot about. Um, there's some videos out there now, um, but I'm refraining on that one until I ride it uh, with the Gringotts Coaster. But I know some things, it looks great. Finally then, another of my favourite shots. And um, this is inside one of the restaurants, the Leaky Cauldron in Diagon Alley. Um, look at this there, it looks amazing. And um, the good thing about this, it's actually going to serve British classics as well. Um, so you're going to be able to get bangers and mash, fish and chips, mushy peas, stuff like that is all going to be in there. The British classics um, are going to be served, uh, not just some American food. So they're really taking this to the next level in terms of immersive scenery with your food as well. Amazing, I mean, yeah. What more could I say? Diagon Alley, I cannot wait to experience it. Looks great, uh, an amazing theme in there as well. 
Going on from that then, another new ride which is opening next week. We're going to be there for the opening of this one. And that is Ratatouille, the adventure, the amazing new dark ride. Uh, it's cost over 100 million euro for this ride, which is a lot of money. Uh, we've been waiting for this for four years when the rumour start first came out. Uh, and this is it. This is Ratatouille, the adventure in uh, Walt Disney Studios Park at Disneyland Paris. And we're going to be there. A lot of people have ridden it who are friends with cast members. And um, there's been a couple of little previews and stuff going on. There was a media press day as well uh, this week. Um, but yeah, the official opening is the 10th of July, which is next week. That's where the next episode of the show will be from um, in two weeks' time on the 15th of July. Um, but yeah, it looks amazing, this ride. I've not seen a POV of the inside. Again, I'm saving this, but I have seen some pictures of the restaurant, which I'll share with you. So this is a picture of Bistro and uh, Chez Rami which is built into it, and someone's told me, I don't know if it's true, if you've watched the POV you'll know, but I don't want to know the answer. Apparently you come off the ride and the restaurant's sort of there in front of you through a, like a glass panel. That's about all I know about the inside of that show building, which sounds amazing, just to come off this Mac transit, like the transit system, the, the trackless ride systems, are amazing as it is, and then it's just going to be there. It's gonna, I'm, I'm just like zoning out thinking about it. But yes, cannot wait for this. Disneyland Paris, going to be sampling it and I'll talk all about it. It will be a bit of a spoiler show the next one because I will take you through everything about that ride and the whole show will be based sort of on that and the other aspects of Disneyland Paris and what's changed. Can't wait for that. I can't wait. This time next week I'll be there at Disneyland Paris ready for well, the night before the opening and yeah. Absolutely fantastic, but yeah, there's some images there. Of course, you've got Plaza de Remy there as well, which looks amazing with the fountain in the middle. Uh, and at night, that looks fantastic as well from a bit of footage I saw um, the other evening. Two amazing projects there. I can't wait to experience them both this year. Um, I've, I've been very lucky actually this year to see a lot of the new attractions in the world. Some of the best things like Helix at Liseberg, uh, Fluke de Diamond at uh, Heidi Park, uh, all sorts, Fantasyland, Chia Pass. Obviously this at Disney and Port Ventura, we're going to be there at the end of the, uh, July. It's a brilliant year for Theme Park Worldwide and I'm really glad all you guys are coming along for the journey. Anyway, that's all for your news this week, quite a lot of it as well. Uh, and we're going to now move into Merch Paradise. Da, 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 da. Woo. Bit of an interesting one this week because it's not actually merchandise what you can buy from the park. You've never really been able to buy it. Um, but in another way you can do, because Alton Towers used to actually run, oh that's gave away where they're from, um, Alton Towers used to actually have uh, something called Your Day, which would film you as you went around the park, it was launched back in 2007, it would film you around the park and it would put your day onto a DVD, and you used to have these wristbands, so these are very very old, I mean from 2007, these you used to wear them, and as you went down Tower Street it would film you walking down Tower Street, this would activate the cameras, and then as you go on all the major rides, like the Big Five, I think it was, it would film you on it. And then at the end of the day, you could go and buy your DVD, either for the separate ride or for the whole park. I thought it was a brilliant idea. It was a shame when they stopped doing it. Um, but it wasn't amazingly reliable. I can see why they didn't keep going with it. Um, but then when your day actually um, went bust, the company that came in to do it, um, they carried on using it and Alton Towers actually did it with their own wristbands. So there are two different types of wristbands there. What belong here at the World of Theme Parks? Um, but yeah, it was a very good system. I really enjoyed it, like I say. Um, but yeah, absolutely fantastic there. Pieces of merch. Let's have a little look at your merchandise then. You might have heard a strange noise, what sounded like a horse. And that's because there's some fields just behind the World of Theme Parks with horses in. So don't think I'm adding random sound effects in of horses going nay. Because it was a real horse just a few metres away. <laughs> um, but yeah, Zoe Mitchell then. That was so random. Zoe Mitchell, massive fan. She has to be our number one fan here on Theme Park Worldwide. Uh, she's even got Theme Park Worldwide in her Facebook name. That's amazing. But there you go. Um, nice selection of merchandise there from Blackpool Pleasure Beach. Which is her favourite theme park. Well, amusement park. Um, but yeah, fantastic there. Thanks for sending it in. Matthew Wakefield, selection of resins there. You've got a couple of good ones. Again, we've got them down here in the world of theme parks. Really good, the resins. They're one of my favourite pieces of merchandise out there now, what Merlin do. Nathan Fisher with his selection of merchandise. Look at that there, some really, really nice items. Thanks for sending it in. Matthew Chapman with his mugs. 
Now, Matthew, I'm not very happy with how you're looking after your mugs. You need to put some shelves up like this and make them a bit more, you know. But you're looking at them just chucked there. Sort your mugs out. There you go. Um, but thanks for sending it in. And then also you got Matt with a selection of merch. Smile Bear there with a Smile Maker as well. I love the Smile Makers. When you're at Alton Towers, make sure you buy one. Um, they're, they're just crazy. Good like party tricks to put in and scare someone and just go, ah. But yeah, talking of the smile, I'm wearing my uh, Smile t-shirt today. It made me smile. Um, but yeah, that is all um, for your Merch Paradise. If you have any, tweet them in at ThemeParkWW or on private message on our Facebook page by liking Theme Park Worldwide. There's magic moments filled with love. Awesome Merch Paradise there. Uh, it just made me think actually, I might get some Your Day DVDs back out from back in the day and sort of reminisce my childhood when I was growing up going to the park. Absolutely lovely memories to keep. Magic moments then, and looking at your memories, like what I did there. Uh, but yeah, first off you got Jenny Cousins. Awesome shot there she took of Saw the Ride. Where has that photo been taken from? Comment below. Where do you think that photo was took from? Bit of a different angle uh, than you usually get at that ride, which is what I like. Uh, Henry Buxton, Smiler, on ride there, absolutely fantastic, look like you're enjoying it. Jason Wilson, also on the Smiler, really, really good, it's all about Smiler this week. <laughs> and also another one there on Rita at Alton Towers as well, um, which is the Intamin launch coaster in the Dark Forest. Next up then, you have got Lucas Marrows uh, with a preview of Disneyland Paris' Ratatouille, there he is, I'm very, very jealous, he's on the plaza there. Um, of the ride. I haven't asked him to tell me all about it because I don't want to know until I've ridden it. But yeah, that's him. I'm very jealous. That's nice. Let me take a selfie on the plaza. <laughs> there you go. Thomas Wilby, um, Stealth at Thorpe Park. Look like you're enjoying that there. Yeah, again, another interim launch coaster. Really like Stealth. If you've not been on it, make sure you go and check it out at Thorpe Park. Finally, Daniel Graves. Um, that's, I'm on there as well. Um, that's us at the Theme Park Worldwide meet up last year at Alton Towers. It was a great turnout, over 20 people came, we had a great day, uh, and there'll be details on another meet up soon, don't you worry. And um, well, that is all for your magic moments. If you've got any, send them in the same as uh, Merch Paradise, at Theme Park WW on Twitter, or by liking the Facebook page, Theme Park Worldwide, send them there as a private message, and I'll make sure they're in the next show on the 15th of July. Oh, it's that time already. It is time for shout outs then. And this week, our first shout out goes to Caroline Harris, whose birthday it was yesterday. Hope you had an amazing birthday. It's a shame that I couldn't be with you. Um, but yeah, hope you had a really, really good time there um, when you had your birthday meal. Happy birthday from us here at the show. And then you've also got our biggest fan, it's Zoe Mitchell at Colours YT. Hope you're feeling better soon as well. You've been feeling a bit ill as well, much like I have the past couple of days. Twisted Gaming. Uh, Jack Bowman, uh, Ciara Hicks, Evans and Kyle Leach, Ninja X Rapids, happy birthday for this week as well. you got Matt Garnett, um, who's visited Alton Towers three times this week. How lucky are you? I wish I could go that much. <laughs> uh, Jennifer Cousins, who rode X for the first time at Thorpe Park recently as well. Tom Tom Lander and Ye Ye, that guy who does funny stuff. Angelic1234, uh, Theme Park Watchers Tom, Stefan TV, 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 0 1 2 6. Um, you've got Nathan Fisher, Kinkwick2398, there you go, <laughs> that made me laugh that one, uh, you've got Matt Swain, Alton Towers AQA, Jamie Loosley, uh, Reese Mansfield, E.G. Grierson, the Ninja Cat 20 and you've got ZD42, uh, Adam Moss, Daniel Fotheringham, Annie Stribling, Josh Watson, Theme Bar Nation, Sean Terry, T.P. Whippy, Lewis James 451, Henry Buxton and Graham Cambridge. There you go. I do apologise if I pronounce your names wrong. As you know, I'm not the best at pronouncing, but I do try my best. Same again. If you've got a shout out, except you can comment below for next uh, for the next show and this uh, next week on the 15th of July. Comment below and it'll be there. Tweet them in on Twitter or on the Facebook page as well. That's all for this week's episode of Theme Park Worldwide the show. I'm going to jet off to Disneyland Paris. I'll see you for the next episode two weeks today on the 15th of July. Hope you don't miss me too much next week. But there's going to be some lots of other videos coming up on the channel. And there'll be one most nights, a bit of different POVs, off rides, that sort of thing coming up. And then when we get back from Disney, there will be a vlog. 
there will be well, a couple of park vlog. There'll be a park asterix vlog because we're going to asterix as well, which is going to be awesome. A uh, bit of the show from there. Uh, of course, there'll be a new, uh, new episode of the show, fully on location. It's going to be absolutely awesome. On that note, I need to go and pack my suitcase, get ready to fly out, and that means we all need to cue them credits. See you later, guys. It's been a good one. Have a good couple of weeks, and I'll see you then. Bye, folks. <laughs>